one of the things that I noticed that was difficult or a little bit difficult for me to do was always make that comparison. And I thought there was some data out there uh, when we look at not only the purebreds uh, of Brahmin and Angus, but also the crosses that, that represent the combination, as well as the breed. And so I'm going to, ear doesn't have a negative connotation to me like it might in South Carolina, especially on my cowherd talk. It's going to have a very positive connotation. And hopefully, as I go through this, one of the things I'm going to uh, do, I'll be jumping back and forth from Brangus to Brahmin Angus, to Brahmin, to Angus, but to make some comparisons that I think are very valid for both the positives and the negatives associated with Boss Indicus in the cow herd. Uh, with that said, there's been a lot of uh, questions, you know, should we straight breed, should we cross breed? I'm going to revisit just a little bit of that as well uh, because I think it's a valid comment that exists out there today. So what are the benefits of using some Boss Indicus in my cow herd? Uh, the data is pretty strong and in terms of weaning productivity. The, the Brahmin by Bostar's cow is unequal in terms of her productivity in hot, humid areas of the country, as well as the, the dry areas of Arizona, on into Nebraska, and even some data clear to Canada. Longevity of these cows is considerably longer. Their cavities is, is outstanding. They have some resistance to um, internal and external parasites, and they keep their teeth longer. And we'll talk about that more. You take a look at these cows, uh, Don Frankie in Louisiana summarized uh, the performance of F1 Brahmin by British cows over a tremendous amount of research that was done um, in the 60s, 70s, and 80s. And these cows, F1 Brahmin by British cows, weaned 10% greater number of calves, or calves, 10% more. Calves survived 5% better. They weaned 12.5% more. And of those they weighed 12 and a half percent more, they weighed 70 more pounds. Tell me one other thing in the beef business we talk about today that would give me 70 pounds. There isn't. Okay? Now certainly when you look at these cows, this F1 Brahmin by British is a difficult one to come by. They don't just grow on trees everywhere. If they did, that's the only cow that exists in the southeast. She, it really doesn't matter if you're in an environment like this where we have tremendous forage potential. If you're in the desert southwest where there's very little forage at all. If you're in South Texas, if you're in Nebraska, she's the Cadillac. Okay, she is the Cadillac. It doesn't really matter if you're talking about red Cadillacs, black Cadillacs, or spotted Cadillacs. She is the Cadillac, but she is extremely difficult to produce. Someone has to generate her from a set of purebreds, and that's. Not always an easy thing to do because in the southeast, we have a set of purebred Angus cows, putting a Brahmin bull on them to generate these or a set of purebred Herefords. We have some adaptability issues that we're going to talk about. If you do it the other way around and you use Brahmin cows with your unadapted bull, so to speak, then you have the issues associated with fertility, udders, and some of the other things that exist within the purebred Brahmin breed. So, while I'm on the subject of color, most of you have probably seen this graph from the latest beef quality audit, which would suggest that we're turning them all black. Many of which we're turning black has been the result of the CEB programs and the Angus program. To the extent that some of those breeds are even questioning if we still need to crossbreed anymore. Maybe we just need to straight breed and uh, accomplish our goals that way. I'm wondering why you're even asking that question. Like these two airplane pilots here saying, what's a mountain goat doing way up here in the cloud bank? To me, this is a very simple answer. Definitely, we need to crossbreed. Now, the question is, what breeds do we put into that combination in the southeast to make it work? This cow is tremendous in terms of hybrid vigor. And remember, if we go back to genetics and think about this a little bit, in terms of fertility, calf survival, and longevity, there is no equal. And there's a tremendous amount of ancient history to support this and it hasn't changed it hasn't gone away um, and that hybrid vigor seems to be greatest in suboptimal environments the harsher the environment gets the more is expressed and the more those crossbred animals outperform straight bred animals and most of you have seen this straight breeding is certainly much like your uh, checking account what you put into it's what you get out of it crossbreeding is a lot like a savings account you're getting a little interest and I'll tell you that crossbreeding with the Brahmin cross female, when I used to give this talk, I told you it was like the stock market. 
Okay? You get a much higher interest rate. I can't say that anymore. I don't know how I'm going to have to rephrase this, but she is a really a superior uh, cow. There's a lot of data. In terms of pounds of calf wean per cow exposed, we're looking at 25 to 35% improvement. Number one factor affecting bottom line on most cow calf men's operation is pounds of calf wean per cow exposed. 25 to 35% improvement is off the chart in terms of making improvement in beef production. And a, a big chunk of that is dependent on the use of the crossbred cow. If you specifically look at how Brangus compare to Brahmin cross cows, and you go to the Meat Animal Research Center in Nebraska, this was some work that was summarized where they looked at the, the effect of breed of sire of these cows as compared to their standard Angus Hereford that we've all looked at their data. Well, if you take a look at the Brahmin cows, they actually had calves that were slight, that were lighter than Angus Hereford calves at birth. They had significantly less calving difficulty, and we'll come back and revisit some of these. They had significantly more weaning weight. The calves gained more uh, <laughs> while they were on the dam. They had basically the same reproduction. This is the Brahmin F1 cow in Nebraska had the same amount of, uh, same level of reproduction. They basically weaned the same amount, pounds of calf, pounds of calf per cow exposed was about 50 pounds more. <coughs> 50 pounds more than the supposedly Angus Hereford base in Nebraska. Now we're in a very temperate zone. Most of you that have studied the data in the Meat Animal Research Center recognize that alfalfa hay and corn silage is not necessarily a very subpar environment compared to what we're dealing with in most of the uh, southeast U.S. And that the Brahmin cows were considerably larger than the Angus Hereford cows. Now the Brangus on this truck on this side, if you compare them, they were much more similar in terms of birth weight uh, than comp as compared to the Angus Hereford. They were similar to the Angus Hereford in birth weight. They had, were similar in terms of calving difficulty. They weaned bigger calves, better pre-weaning gain, um, same conception rate, same weaning rate, same basically pounds of calf per cow exposed, and, ba and pretty similar in cow size. So in Nebraska, the Brangus sired females um, might not have been quite as good as the Brahmin sired F1s, but they certainly were equal to the Angus Hereford, if not exceeding the Angus Hereford. If you look at some data out of Florida, this is where they compared Brangus, to Angus and Hereford. You can see in terms of birth weight, one of the things that was going on, Brangus, cows, when, when all these cows were made to the same breed of bull, Brangus cows produced uh, 73 pound calves at birth, similar to Herefords and slightly greater than Angus. They were also the superior cow in terms of weaning weight performance by far in that particular environment with Angus and Hereford being much more uh, similar in type. If you look in the arid southwest in New Mexico, some studies that were done where they looked at Brangus, Hereford, and then some uh, reciprocal crosses with the two original breeds. One of the things that really stands out is the uh, Brangus and the reciprocal crosses camped much sooner in the year. They also weaned a much higher percentage. They had heavier calves at weaning than did the Herefords. And the when you compare Brangus and Hereford, they basically did it with the same cow weight. They basically did it with the same cow weight. And when you put it on a measure of weaning weight of the calf to cow weight, which may not be necessarily the best measure of efficiency, um, the Brangus or the Brangus crosses certainly outperformed the Herefords in that southwest environment.